Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Today I will be analyzing the company of Sono Motors Group, which if everything goes as planned, it should be going public this upcoming Tuesday, November 16, 2021 in the Nasdaq under the ticker symbol SEV. As always, my aim with these videos is to analyze the most rele relevant aspects about the company based on their SEC filing, which is publicly available and the link to it will be just down below in the description. And afterwards, if you find the company interesting, if you want to just do more research, you can go and you should anyways go and do your own due diligence on that. Nevertheless, before I go into the analysis, let me quickly give you a short overview of the main topics that I will be covering today. First, I will start with a general introduction to the company, we will look at some key metrics, then we will go into the industry and competitors, followed by the financials, then the IPO price and valuation, and finally, as always, I will be giving my personal opinion on the company and also my future plans with it. With that said though, and after I remind you that if you enjoyed the video, it would be really super awesome if you could give it a like and please also consider subscribing if you want to see more IPO related videos also in the future. But with that said, let's go for it. Firstly, I want to clearly state that this electric vehicle maker is actually pre-revenue. It's reporting at the moment zero sales, which means that this video will be a bit different from other IPO videos that I usually do if you have been following me already for a while. Sono Motors is a German car company that is actually based in Munich, which is developing a solar-powered family-sized car for the mass market. The car itself is called Scion, and it is an electric car that incorporates solar modules, so solar panels basically all around its body, which of course capture electricity from the sun and then it stores it in the battery of the car. Basically, the company has or will have two different lines of revenue when it starts reporting this. One from selling, of course, manufacturing and selling this model of car, so the Scion, which we'll go into more detail just in a little while. And secondly, also from licensing the solar technology that they use all around the car and also hopefully selling them to other car manufacturers or maybe even going into other industries. Firstly, we will center our attention on the Scion car and the manufacturing and everything around it. In the screen, you can see how the car looks like. Personally, I don't find it especially nice in terms of aesthetics, but at the end of the day, what I want in a car is that it works. Also, they are targeting the mass market with a family car, and usually families, what they want is just a functional car with enough space to fit everything and that just works fine. And the car has an expected range of 305 kilometers, which is the equivalent to 190 miles with a battery capacity of 54 kilowatts hour. The cool thing about the car is that it can add on average 112 kilometers of range per week and that's on average being the maximum that it can charge the car if the conditions are optimal of 245 kilometers of range per week, which is pretty good. And all of this data is in Germany, which of course it's not the most sunny country in the world, but probably if we were to take this car to other countries like Spain, the range that you could accumulate over a week without doing anything, just having the, park, the car parked outside would be even larger. It can be charged with up to 75 kilowatts of direct current charging, which means that if you go to a supercharger, a fast charging station, you can charge 80% of the battery of the car within just 35 minutes. And also you have the option to just plug the car in the regular power socket at home, which I think it's very convenient. Of course, then if you do that, it will take ages to fully charge the car, but it's good that you also have this option. And another cool thing is that they have a bi-directional onboard charger, which means that from your Scion car, you can charge another electric vehicle or you can just redirect uh, the electricity to your home if you need it to power things, or you can connect other devices to charge them with the battery of your car. On the battery, it is expected to have a useful life of around 3000 charging cycles and Sono Motors provides or is expected to provide a guarantee of two years or 100,000 kilometers, whichever one comes first. And then just for the battery itself, the same conditions that we mentioned previously, but on top, the guarantee also covers with, with up to 2000 charging cycles. The maximum speed of the car is of 140 kilometers an hour and it has an engine with 120 kilowatts of power which is the equivalent to around 160 horsepower which I think that it's more than enough. And then on reservations according to the SEC filing it says that you can get the car for or pre-book the car for a locked price of 33,900 euros but actually when you go to their website the price that you find there is of 28,500 euros of course including German 
Performant V18. Regardless on which of the two prices is the actual one, I find the car very affordable comparing it to other, model, other models currently out there. In terms of price and range, it is very competitive and the fact that it can get charged just by staying parked outside is a real plus. On it though, it is important to remember that this is just the current picture with the models available in the market, but the Scion is only expected to go or to be delivered actually to people during the first half of the year 2023, so it's almost two years away, which means that also by then probably there will be many more EVs that will be more competitive and in line with what Scion is expecting to offer. But what is the key factor or factors allowing Sono Motors to offer the car, the Scion car at such competitive prices? Well, one of them is that they are only going to produce this model of car in the same color, all of them, and with the same features inside. So there will be no choice. With that, what they will do is just to streamline the production and just have to produce one exact model and just multiply this for as many cars as they are ordered. Then the second thing is that they will outsource the manufacturing part to a third party provider. Provider. In this case, the former SAP Automobile AB plant in Trollhan, Sweden. And finally, they will only do direct to consumer distribution through their website. This means that they will have no dealerships, and actually, they are expecting to have a reduce of 15% in the distribution cost thanks to not having the dealerships and just doing everything through the website. And in case you're wondering, yes, you will be able to order the car through the website, but also do it uh, through the website to book, for instance, test drives, or if you want, for instance, to book an appointment to just simply view the car. On reservations, as of November 5th, 2021, they had more than 16,000 with advanced payments resulting in net cash inflows of 40.8 million euros, but reservations though are cancelable anytime and customers can get the full refund, so just keep that in mind. And then on the B2B side, they also have pre-orders totaling more than 30,000 orders in total. Now switching to the other business line of licensing the technology of the solar modules around the structure of the vehicle, they use polymer solar technology, not glass one, which is more commonly used for solar panels. And furthermore, several manufacturers have already shown interest in maybe purchasing or licensing this type of technology, and the first samples have already been sent to several different potential customers, so the company is actually expecting already to generate some kind of revenue before the end of this year. As revenue sources, they also expect to have a third one, which is a car sharing and ride pooling application. So basically an app that connects people to find a ride. In my eyes, this is not super original because there are lots of other apps out there that are solving this problem. For instance, for car sharing, blah, blah, car, or for just renting a car for some hours, there's ShareNow or many other companies out there. So for me, this line of business is certainly not very promising, or at least I don't see it very promising. And also even in the RSTC filing, they state that this is much more in the long term. So first of all, they want to get the car manufactured and also the licensing technology, and then after maybe they will start doing this. Now it's time to talk about the industry and the competitors and first on the industry although I don't know if we need to say much because I feel like we're already witnessing every single day how this transition towards electric vehicles is happening but anyways the global total market share for battery electric cars and plug-in hybrid vehicles is expected to increase from 4% in 2020 to between 34 to 58% in 2030 and between 70% and 100% by 2040 according to Bloomberg and EF. And this shift, combined with a decrease in the price of photovoltaic solar modules and the increase in efficiency, are also favorable factors. On competitors, there are many car manufacturers that already have electric vehicles in the market, and I would even dare to say that every single car manufacturer in the world currently either already has an electric vehicle model in the market, or they will release one in the next one to two years ahead. So pretty much every single car company is a competitor to Sono Motors. And then also just looking more at only electric vehicle makers, we have of course companies like Tesla, of course super successful, or others that are also pre-revenue like Rivian or Lucid Motors. And then additionally, some traditional car manufacturers have already incorporated solar panels in the structure of the car. So some of them though were not fully electric, but for instance, Hyundai, Toyota, or Kia have already introduced this. According to the SEC filing, they say that they are up to four years ahead of the other competitors in terms of solar electric vehicles, 
But now going to the financials and starting first with revenues, as we already mentioned, they are pre-revenue, they are not reporting any revenues, but the losses are increasing and will increase even more as they get closer to production. The most important thing in a company pre-revenue like this one is to see if the current cash reserves will be enough to support the future growth until they reach to some kind of positive cash flow. And for that, we need to look at the balance sheet and we see that as, as of June 30th, 2021, they had 26 million euros in cash. But considering the burn rate that they have had in the past, this is not a lot. So probably they are almost out of it and the next financing option that they have taken is basically this IPO. The current debt ratio is of 172%, which is also very bad as they have more debt than assets. With the offering, it will go down momentarily, but it is likely to increase again as they burn through more cash. In today's video, I won't compare the financials to any competitors because I feel like it's pretty pointless given that they are making zero revenues and I would compare it with other electric vehicles making also zero revenues. So we will move directly into the IPO price and valuation. On the IPO price at the moment of recording this video, it is expected to range between $14 and $16 per share. And it is also important to know that after the offering, there will be two types of shares, the common ones and the high voting ones. Both of them will be exactly the same in terms of economic interest. The only difference is the high voting one will be entitled to 25 votes per share and of course all the high voting shares will remain with the two founders that will hold 78.16% of the total voting power which I like because it means that they will be able to make any decision that they want. And actually talking about the founders, they are Lauren Han and Jonah Christians, that they are only 27 and 28 year olds, so super young. And they also have gross salaries, including all types of bonuses of only 44,000 euros per year gross, which to be here in Munich, I can tell you that this is the salary that juniors get in most companies. So it is certainly a very low one to be CEOs or founders of a company. And I like it because they are not putting themselves high salaries. They are just putting themselves enough to live comfortably. And they are really focusing on making the company successful and reach production and hopefully not go bankrupt in the process. On proceeds, they are expecting to have $135.2 million, assuming the midpoint of the range. And although this could seem like it's a lot of money, it's actually not, because at the burn rate that they have been going at least through the past year, they are burning approximately 50 million euros every single year. And this burn rate will for sure increase as they get closer to production and they actually start production. So with this 135 million, I don't think that it will last them for even two years and for sure they will have to go and get more financing somehow. And this is very important and they actually mention it in their filing and I'm quoting directly what they say, which is the funding that we expect to obtain from this offering will not be sufficient to secure our needs through the start of production of the Scion. The good thing about the IPO, besides of course all the proceeds generated from it, is that it will give the company more visibility around the world and hopefully they will have more pre-reservations for their car. And actually it's just, I think, 500 euros for pre-reservation, but at least they will also be able to increase their cash reserves thanks to that. Going into the valuation and taking the middle point of the range, it is expected to have a market cap of $1.1 billion. And if we compare this with other EV companies, pre-revenues like Rivian, which just went public last week, or Lucid Motors, we see that Rivian is trading at a market cap of $127 billion and Lucid at $71 billion. Both of these competitors' valuations are ridiculous in my opinion, and I find them extremely overvalued. In light of all of these, what are my thoughts on the company and will I be investing in its IPO? For me, the answer is super simple. No, I have absolutely no intention of investing in it. The reasons for that are several. The first one is that it is a pre-revenue company that is not expecting to generate any meaningful revenue until in at least two years time when they start delivering the first cars, if everything goes well. So that's first thing. Secondly, yes, they are now getting financing thanks to the IPO, but as we already read from the SEC filing, they already state that they will need more financing in order to basically support their whole scaling up process. And this means that if I invest now in the company, I am very likely to get diluted in the future. On top of that, we also have many other competitors now emerging, companies like Rivian, like Lucid Motors, amongst many others, plus also all the traditional car manufacturers also entering into making electric vehicles. So very, very competitive market. 
and we also have all the past data of many manufacturers that have gone bankrupt in the past trying to become the next Volkswagen or Tesla so that could very well be the case with Sono Motors. I'm not saying that it's going to be but the risk is there so for me simply the risk reward potential with this company is not there and if you ask me what do I think that will happen on IPO day based on the IPO last week of Rivian Motors probably the stock will go much higher than the IPO price but but of course we need to see. Anyways, please remember that everything that I shared in this video is just based on my research, my opinion and my calculations, which of course all of them could be wrong. So I take absolutely no responsibility and you should always do your own due diligence whenever investing in this or any stock. With that said though, what are your thoughts on Sono Motors? Will you be investing in its IPO? Please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not yet subscribed and as always, see you next time.